What's up guys, it's part two of how to throw in the keys for training those beginning discus throwers. And what is the one thing we're gonna talk about? We've talked about it a lot, carrying the discus. Talked about it slightly in part one. Now we're gonna go in depth for carrying, dragging, holding, hand position. All these little details, absolutely critical not to overlook. And we're gonna talk about it in this video, so check it out. We have to now make sure that the athlete holds the discus. What are a lot of your athletes gonna do? They're gonna grip the discus, you're gonna try to show them how to put it in the fingertips, and then a lot of them are gonna put too, many, too much fingertip on it, thumb in the wrong position, and they're gonna cup. Or they're gonna hold their thumb up and they're gonna be doing it like this. They're gonna push it against themselves, and that is a logical, natural response. Some kids are gonna more comfortably be able to hold the discus, pick it up, and they're gonna start advancing faster. This is the tough thing too when you're coaching beginners. Every level of ability is going to result in kids improving at different rates. So the big thing we want to do is once we understand some basic terms, we understand the basic movement of a power position because we're going to start typically with our stand throw and this is really important. This is where a lot of coaches get hung up. Coaches that don't understand the throw, what they're doing is spending far too much time on a stand throw and they're not progressing from this. You need to progress from this. Worst case scenario, I would say two weeks for a thrower who's brand new to be throwing in a stand position. We have so many things. I've seen, hosted camps for over a decade, actually multiple decades I've been producing and hosting camps. And what we see is that I've had multiple times where I've come to camps where kids are spending a year, two years, three years. Even one camp, I remember in particular, I had an athlete that was spending her fourth year in a stand throw. And this makes it very difficult to move on. So two weeks, focus on that. It's not gonna be the prettiest throw after two weeks, but that's worst case scenario because this next tip is what I want you to walk away with today. When you have that discus, they, when, like you said, they're gonna tend to hold like this in cup, and they're gonna do this kind of thing, and they're, they're not comfortable. This is where you need to learn how to hold the discus. Holding the discus is absolutely critical, because if I think, if I'm moving, and I feel uncomfortable, and I'm holding this in a way where I feel like when I start to wind, I'm gonna lose the discus, and I do this, and it feels like it's gonna fall, that's what my reaction's gonna be. Right? So again, our system is called throwing chain reaction. We set up actions that create positive reactions or we set up actions that create negative reactions. You want your athletes always feeling positive reactions and having the time, like we talked about in the beginning of the video, we don't have time to think. We're gonna have time to react. Positions and drills, that's what we do with our system is break it down. We train pillar pieces, we train pieces of the throw that's our chain reaction but we're working smaller pieces and we're always building that's basic language that's called a progression so if you're a brand new coach and you're coaching beginners a progression we're going to start with a stand throw and we're going to do different phases keep putting the throw together until we work to a point where we have a whole throw okay so for today's quick lesson this is our series on how to throw the discus 101. Remember, if you're a member, you log in this foundation video, we're gonna expand on this. We're gonna go into some additional things, P TCR specific terminology, right? Throwing chain reaction. And we're going to talk about identifying certain things, weaknesses and things that are additionally gonna con contribute to these problems. Now, remember, if you're just watching this and you wanna know, we just talked about heel toe position, orbit, radius, and separation. Really, really critical factors. So one of the things that we're gonna to wanna to do is if we, we are working with a brand new thrower, we're gonna to wanna to work on simple things. Stuff like this, back and forth, spin the discus, learn how to get comfortable with the discus. If you look at advanced throwers, you're gonna see that they're comfortable. Can you get your throwers to comfortably do this? I guarantee you they can't just do something simple like this. You wanna do winds where they're gonna learn how to hold that discus and push it out and just hold their arm out and then hold the arm back. Notice how my discus is straight up and down, how I'm holding my hand allows me to hold this, and this is gonna also start to contribute to how to release it. So we have things like bowling, we're gonna do, um, call it either a grass cutter or a skip, we're gonna skip that discus across, you're gonna toss the discus up, right, where they can just, athletes can just spin the discus up in the air and have it fall down about 15, 20 feet in front of them. Um, you're gonna do all these sorts of things daily. You're gonna have kids winding and you're gonna have them wind faster. Now, when you do that, of course, 
You spread athletes out so that if somebody drops a discus or throws, nobody's gonna get hurt. Safety's always a really critical component. And remember, you have athletes when they're doing stuff, give them enough space. But when we start doing something like a wind, we do this. We're moving the discus and we're just learning how to push the discus into the fingertips. A lot of kids will hold that discus uncomfortable and then they wind like this where they're holding. And so when they try to get it back, they're doing this and then the discus feels like they're gonna fall their hand. So they're making compensation, they're cupping, they're doing this, they're carrying and they need to drag the discus. Once an athlete moves, they need to be carrying it back here. So if I just keep here, you see me move through, I'm dragging the discus, I'm not holding the discus. So what you wanna learn is the very first things are, don't sell yourself short. And again, you wanna learn how to carry it because if the athlete feels like the disc is gonna fall out, and a lot of athletes feel that, I would say a good 25% of brand new throwers, when they're throwing the discus, the discus isn't comfortable in their hands. So when they start to whine, they, they think what they're doing to whine and the discus feels they get to hear and the, the way they're holding it, it does that. They're holding their thumb wrong. So the discus is always coming out. So they do this and the discus is doing that. So they don't wanna drop it. That becomes the reaction. They're not learning anything. They're learning, oh, I don't wanna drop it. So you've gotta get the athlete comfortable. So take the time on that first brand new thing. Have some fun, make a little game, throw a, um, you know, some cones or little cones like this, make a little circle, have the, them drop the discus in, have bowling contests, who can do it? Put the cones, two cones, you know, 60 feet, 100 feet, put it out. Who can bowl it nice and soft through the, through the discus? Put the cones 100 feet out. Who can do it? It's a fun, simple game. Put something out at 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet. Have the athlete just kind of do this and guide and try to place the discus. They need to learn control quickly. So if you're a brand new coach and you have brand new throwers, this can be a great way to spend the first half of your throwing practice. Learning, spend that 20 or 30 minutes to get comfortable. Who quickly do you see is comfortable holding the discus? You're gonna have inevitably a kid who just kind of gets it, feels it, and then is able to kind of sling. That's gonna be the kid that's gonna accelerate further. You're gonna have some other kids that it's not real comfortable and they need to spend time to do that. And it might take that other kid a week. It might take them two days, it might take them seven days, it might take them 14 days, but it shouldn't take more than a couple of weeks. So that's gonna be a small percentage of your athletes. You're gonna have the athletes who pick it up. Those are the athletes who are maybe bigger, stronger, naturally a little bit more athletically inclined. And those athletes are gonna be able to progress faster, okay? So this is it. That's one of the challenges you have as a new coach, understanding everybody's gonna be a little different, right? That's one of the things we address inside our system. We teach you the throw. We teach you how to create an individual formula for every athlete as well. So today's video, some basic terms, some understanding of the power position and how to hold the discus because once we get to this point, right, we wanna get comfortable, we wanna see our athletes in this position and we're gonna be able to get here and we're gonna have them wind up to the high point, get over the right leg and then they're gonna be hitting that block, turning that hip, feeling this and allowing this to come in and now they're doing a stand throw. This should be probably the first half of your first day. That's a good way to start and then from there, we would start working into other pieces of the throw, half turn, right, working from this position into the power position. And then we would be looking at how we're going to be working another progression, putting it here, working into the throw until we're starting to put together a full throw. Each of these things will require position training to understand things that are very unnatural. This motion of sequencing this and having this follow is an unnatural throwing motion and it takes time, but it shouldn't take that much time. The goal is if you're a new coach, you wanna understand all these things so that you can implement a good solid practice plan. And that's something we're gonna talk about inside our members video. So, hey, thank you guys so much. Hopefully this helps. We have another video that's gonna talk about how to work on moving from the middle into the power position and then how to move from the back of the ring into the middle and put together a full throw. So we'll have a three video series on how to build that foundation. This is all the precursor to the throwing chain reaction. And again, we want you to understand what we covered today, pillar five, six, basic terminology, and pillar five, six, we refer to those two pillars make up the power position. And 
these are the things that are going to help you to establish the right foundation. You're going to be very close to teaching good things. And what we try to do with our videos and systems is always put together quality information that's going to help put you on the right track to learning more and understanding how the throw works. It's a great sport. We want to see more athletes succeed and we have a real shortage of coaches and that's why we have our system available. So click the link in the description if you'd like more information. And thanks so much. Be sure to hit that like button, comment below on anything you'd like to see and hopefully this video helped and we'll see you on the next video talking about the next phase of coaching beginning throwers. Thanks so much and we'll see you on the next video.